Wyverns and Weirdos Curse of Strahd is a horror-themed campaign, and as such, contains dark themes, including descriptions of gore, violence, and other features intrinsic to the gothic horror genre. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Wyverns and Weirdos Does Curse of Strahd. I am your Dungeon Master, Darby, and joining me as always is Zoe playing Sevia, Emily playing Beatrice, Laura playing Conrad, Mitch playing Exley, and Johanna playing Fall. Let's begin. So, when we last left off, the party reached the village of Kresk um, and investigated the town somewhat, uh, going to the Abbey of St. Markovia. There they discovered uh, several uh, inhabitants of the Abbey, uh, most of which were these strange humanoid beasts hybrids, uh, driven all kinds of insane, uh, and, uh, the other, the other two key inhabitants were a speaking flesh golem, uh, who was built to be the bride of Strahd, named Vasilka, and a, uh, a celestial uh, priest known only as the abbot uh, which gave Beatrice no end of bad vibes uh, for both good and bad reasons so uh, where we ended the party had located where the uh, the item that they were to seek in the abbey was and they were settling down for the night and I believe had just been told that they could start their long rest so um yeah, so the the night is it's not it's not comfortable uh, but it is strain a, a, an almost strangely quiet night for Barovia. This is the first night that you've been here in Barovia that uh, something hasn't happened to either interrupt your sleep or greet you as you woke up. Um, this this morning is almost eerily uneventful. So, no, what would you like no to do? Howling from the people outside. No. <laughs> so, um, just a point of note as well. Um, <clears throat> when everyone was getting ready to go to sleep, Eggsley essentially um, worked his way up to the back of where you are, turned around so that he could face the front door, and then just sort of rocked back a little bit on... Uh, his legs almost like he's in a sitting position but like a sitting squatting and then his eyes slowly dimmed and he was unresponsive for that and then that is where you find him when you all wake up <laughs> now collectively what time would you have liked to have aimed to wake up at Ooh. Early, um, I would like to get out of here. Yeah. Okay, so Imagine that... full is a weird early riser, yeah. and probably it's like seven. So, so <laughs> seven you would have collectively aimed for? Yeah. All right. Um, so, um, uh, yeah. I, I will just say, when um, Exley 
I almost said the wrong name. When Exley powered down, uh, Sevia definitely just looked at him for a minute and reached out as if to like tap him on the head or like poke him or something. And then was like, oh, maybe not. Uh, uh, we just met. Don't go poking people you just met. Um, but she's also going to look at Beatrice, who I assume has been freaking out for several hours at this point. Um, to see if, I don't know, she wants to say anything or do anything before we go to sleep. And if not, she will check in on her again in the morning. Just silently, just seeing what she's doing. Beatrice does not say anything in reply. She does sort of try and sleep the closest to Exley as she can possibly be. Um, And it would have taken her a long time to get to sleep. She was having feelings. That's fair. (laughs) Understandable. Yeah. Um... Well, as normal, like, um, I imagine probably if you guys woke up at about seven, Conrad would, would have be sleeping in still. Um, <laughs> and as usual, he scattered ball bearings very carefully and precisely around where he's um, slept. Um, and obviously before he went to bed, he, like, wrote into his little, like, leather-bound notebook and stuff like that and kind of bottled everything up around himself and then just, like, uh, went to sleep. So he's probably just, like, if you guys woke up at seven, he's probably just sort of kind of, like, He's because he went to bed very carefully, you know, very neatly. He's just like sprawled out, like snoring really loudly, probably <laughs> oh, at this point. <laughs> um, I will say, like, Beatrice, tangled his shit in the sheets. <laughs> Beatrice would be feeling slightly better in the morning, having mulled things over and seeing Conrad still asleep. Uh, will throw uh, the nearest blanket or pillow at him to wake him up. <laughs> Excellent. Enjoy doing that. <laughs> That's fair. Um, cool. All right. So, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <clears throat> what was that for? And he kind of like, he looks really crawl like cross. He, he probably wasn't wearing a shirt or whatever we went to sleep. So he just like grabs the blanket to himself and like, ah, oh, um, what were you, t- what was that for? Beatrice. Morning. Good morning. Is that how you wake everyone? Well, everyone else was already awake. You weren't. Oh, oh, well. <clears throat> I was just resting my eyes. Um, yes. He <clears throat> <laughs> very awkwardly starts to, like, scramble stuff, get re- get dressed, get ready. Um, Thor will go over and be like, Oh, it's okay. Uh, you'll get used to early boardings after a while. And while they're saying this, um, they'd like to try to steal some ball bearings. <laughs> All right, just uh, like three of them. Stealing my balls, are you? Why? <laughs> oh no, <laughs> Paul. <laughs> uh, roll, roll me a sleight of hand check. Okay. Do I roll a perception check, or is that uh, just my passive perception? I guess. I think probably passive. Oh, okay, because <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> that was a nine. <laughs> you, Conrad, you, yeah, you handily see for. Conrad grabs down. your wrist, I guess. Can I have to do a roll for that to grab uh, him in time? Yeah, so that would probably be a technically an unarmed strike. An unarmed uh, strike, okay. But using dexterity. Oh, using on D and so it would be, Oh, using dexterity, okay. Um, so it would be a plus seven. All right, hang on. So um, I ordered fifteen. So I uh, fifteen. That misses. 22. Oh, 22. It misses. Twenty-two yeah. hits. I, mean... I thought I thought you meant total of fifteen. So no, I rolled fifteen no. plus seven. So yeah, yeah. twenty-two. So he yeah. grabs your wrist. He like he's like, oh yes. Well, I'm not used to get. And he just like grabs you, and then I guess like he'll use depending on contested strength roll they use like grabbing your wrist to then pull you closer towards him um without like just like, like suddenly glaring at you very intensely so would that be like a contested strength throw or like um yeah if this is fall all the new ring out i don't know sure if fall wants to avoid it contested strength my god <laughs> oh god why does a seven look so much for one that is a seven though so <laughs> I will take a picture for posterity, but I did roll a, a natural 17. Um, 
Okay, well, yeah, so that is going to be handily <laughs> enough. Oh, there you go. I took a picture. That's right. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, so he then, like, grabs her and pulls you forward towards him with his 14 strength. Um, what were you doing? What are you doing? Let go of me! <laughs> he does not let go of you. What, were you trying to steal one of my things? No, I was just picking it up. Well, you don't need to pick that up for me. I can do that myself very well, thank you. All right. Uh, just use your words next time. There's no need to hurt me. <laughs> um, All right. Here and he. he... <laughs> um, cool. And he lets go of your arm, your wrist, I guess. Beatrice has watched all this and then just says, Children, I would prefer to get out of here in one piece. Children. Oh. <laughs> Conrad rolls his eyes. Yes, well, it's, um, yes, let's, um, yes, absolutely. And he, like, glares, he shoots a glare at Fall and starts to pick up the ball bearings. Sylvia's been standing near Exley and Beatrice watching this the whole time, like, mm, yes. Kids, even though she's barely older than these two. <laughs> <laughs> and just like eating a handful of like dried berries and stuff from our rations. Just, just like, some mm, gold. yes. Hmm? Just some gold. Yep. Just like, I am, I am not a part of this. Mm, I will be silent. So. Speaking sure. of not a part of this, Exley's eyes are still dimmed <laughs> as he's like, still, he hasn't moved. Yeah, I'll uh, address that. <laughs> Um, okay. For a moment, falls like uh, like a flash of like embarrassment and annoyance flickers over his face before he's just like switches into like puppy dog eyes. Like, uh -huh, I'm in the wrong here. And I mean, like, Conrad hurt me. <laughs> Incredible. And it's just like looking at his arm, like, ow. <laughs> Are you all right? <laughs> I suppose technically. Yeah. I've been getting so many injuries lately. I think I might have aggravated one of them. Oh, perhaps you... you shouldn't. Perhaps you shouldn't have been trying to take one of Conrad's things. That uh, is valid. Um, we are trying to be a team, you know. <laughs> I suppose I uh, didn't really need one, but I didn't really need to be attacked like that either. That is also, yes, um, maybe what we need to work on is uh, not attacking each other uh, yeah. <laughs> and also not attempting to take things from one another. You know, we have had this discussion before, haven't we, Paul, that... Uh, um, anyway, <laughs> I'm assuming the way this is being voiced, this is this is audible enough to hear. <laughs> yeah, um, we're all talking like across the room. This is not a private. So Kurt just like grumpily getting his stuff. Like he keeps like shooting a glare back at you guys while he's picking his stuff up, and he's like, and then he just kind of like bundles the stuff under his arm and just like puts the other hand on his hip and just like kind of <laughs> stands there at the other end of the room, just like glaring over at you guys as you're talking. But yes. Well, um, anyway, let's, uh, l let's move on to our uh, planning. Oh, then, um, Sylvia's gonna, yep. like... Ooh. I'm assuming even in this, like, semi-seated position, Exley's probably still taller than Sylvia, or at least, like, her height. Because uh, she's short. But she's just gonna, like, look at his face, and she's gonna wave her hand in front of his face. And see if that does anything. Okay. Um, <clears throat> as you wave the hand in front, the eyes will go back into the, the bright green as normal and just a metal hand will just go in front of his face and go. <laughs> <laughs> he waves back. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. How did you rest? How did I rest? Was it 
good did I mean? Did you have a good, I'm not, I mean, I would love to know the mechanics of how you work, but that seems a little, um, I just want to know if you had a nice rest. It was pleasantly uninterrupted. Good. Good. Um. How did you rest? I... Best night's sleep I've had in Barovia, uh, honestly. Uh, <laughs> so that's good. She gives like a thumbs up and then immediately like puts it down and then just doesn't know what to do with her hands for a second. And then just like puts them on her hips. <laughs> And and then I guess she's going to look around at everyone and kind of drop her voice and be like, so would we like to discuss what we're doing today? Would be, would be a good idea. I don't walks up to her to join you guys as well, but like <laughs> standing a little bit apart. <laughs> that would be wise. Um, at that moment, you see the, the door open and uh, es oh. Esmeralda returns inside. Oh, oh friend! <laughs> friend! Oh, oh, I was wondering when you lost it, get up. So. Oh. Has she been in, in the room at all throughout the night? Uh, throughout the night, yes. So mm -hmm. um, she would have left just before people were starting to get up and taken out some of her weapons and to sharp and a whetstone to kind of sharpen them because you because you can observe mm. things to i can see expense. everything yeah. um but if i interact with anything during the six hours that i'm sleeping yeah. i don't get that long rest no so i can see and like process things mm. as well i can think as well so she hasn't been up much longer than everyone else but mm -hmm. um yeah she has she did rise a little bit before everyone else where have you been going? Where, where were you? Outside, sharpening my blades. Okay, well, that's, um, that's, that's completely understandable. Good. Good. Right. Good. So, the amulet. Yes. Yes. Um, well, Comrade and I worked out where it is. Um, and we don't believe there to be any traps around it. Uh, we're not sure if this is something we can just ask for. Uh, you've met with the abbot before. Do you think he'd give it to us? I don't rightly know. It might depend on your approach to asking. Okay. Depends on... Uh... For what reasoning you give for needing it, I would say. Right. You also must be careful because he doesn't know that we know the amulet is behind the disc. Yes. Yes. He may be less inclined if he thinks we've been snooping. Mm. Well, I mean, because what are we going to say? Oh, some prophecy by some people in a caravan says that we need an amulet. Probably, it's probably this one that you have locked away in a private safe behind a painting. Well, maybe. Isn't he meant to be working against Strahd? So maybe if we say we've been given a prophecy to help defeat him, that works in his favour. Possibly. I suppose that is in his interest. He does seem to believe that the best way to defeat Strahd is to create someone for the express purpose of marriage for him. So, um, hmm. well, well, I guess suppose we'll see. What concerns me, I don't think he said anything about actually defeating Strahd, just breaking the curse. Yes, is the curse in regards to marriage, because that would be understandable, given that. 
I don't there know. There hasn't been any. You've not heard of anything? I don't know if anyone rightly knows what the details of the curse are outside of the dark powers who gave it to him. We might be able to look into that uh, when we make our way to the Amber Temple. Yes. Yes. Well, I suppose would the best course of action then, suggestion, be we attempt to speak to the abbot, ask him if he wishes, if, if he has, we have been, we've heard tell of a prophecy that requires an amulet of some sort. Would he know where we could locate one? Has he seen one? Has he come across in possession of one? And then, suggestion, one of us, be it preferably uh, Beatrice, if you're quite sneaky, or possibly Exley, since you can become something small, perhaps, stay around here. If things do not go well, we then, whoever is uh, located here, steals the amulet and we hightail it out of here. That's my suggestion anyway, the plan that I would recommend. It could work. At least then we can also say that if he does agree to it, you know, we're not doing anything particularly suspicious unless things go wrong. Yes. And um, probably best to make sure everyone is well equipped in case uh, either option goes poorly. Mm. I can, if we want, I didn't, I wasn't sure when the abbot was going to come back yesterday, but I do... I can detect to see if there are any traps magically placed over the over the safe. It takes about ten minutes, but I can do it if we want to be extra certain. That's possible too. Okay. Well, just as a as a precaution, if we do end up needing to steal it, it would be good to know if there's any magic that's going to I don't know, turn one of us green or unwild shape someone indeed yes well that would not be good mm. i suppose that would be a good precaution if we are of course not going to just steal it and run away probably not a good choice for um uh to make an enemy of someone who has such power already mm. but um we shall uh yes that does sound good well um i can do that now, if we want, before he arrives. It's a good idea. And, and you can keep discussing plans while I do that. Well, that would be the best course of action, I would say. Okay, uh, let me know if the abbot comes in and I'll make it look like I'm not doing anything suspicious. And she's going to go over to um, the symbol on above the, the hearth. And she's going to perform Detect Magic as a ritual. Okay. A spell I completely forgot I had. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, that takes 10 minutes. Okay. Noted. So, uh, is it possible to simply tell the abbot what you know that is pertinent to your knowledge of the amulet being here? Well, we could mention the part of the prophecy it is in. Yes, that was uh, my initial suggestion. We just bring that up, and if he volunteers it, then yes. So, again, I think that is a good thing to do. Yeah, I suppose it, um, if he uh, spreads the word about it, it wouldn't really put us in too much danger, except maybe the Moinsia who gave the prophecy. And as we already know, of course, they seem to be in the habit of giving this prophecy to most likely everyone, so um, probably not really a big issue. Yes, it should be safe. Good. I don't think it's everyone, just everyone that... Uh... Mother Eve uh, thinks we will, uh, well, 
anyone who is prophesied to have some sort of fighting chance. Horrid looks full up and down, looks severe up and down, looks at Beatrice, is like, hmm. He's like, okay. Well, Thor looks at himself up and down and is like, hmm, no. <laughs> that's one theory, I suppose. Well, is there anything else in this room? Like, it's just like, this is just like where we put like our beds and stuff like that. There's no food or anything we can grab or. Uh, no, not really. Uh... Okay. Just a just a side note. Uh, how high up the wall is this disc and the the alcove? Um, it's not it's not overly like high up. It's it's just it's essentially at face height for like so it's the average. And Conrad and yeah yeah and and not Beatrice. No, like, <laughs> Beatrice is yeah. Beatrice is only four foot five. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Might be a little short. Yeah. Exley would need to crouch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So at the end of the 10 minutes of ritual casting, detect magic. Um, so uh, you don't see any sort of arcane glow come from the from the disc itself. Um, you do spot there, there are faint glows coming from the weapons that you were gifted from uh, Van Richten. Um, the r really faint glows coming from like the scrolls, uh, the scroll that you have and the inks that you have. Um, slight glow probably coming from Exley. Um, and I'm not sure if there's anything else. Did any? I don't think anyone has any magic items on them, do they? As of yet. Uh, and unless the spell book counts, but no. Sevia wouldn't. Yeah. No. Um. Oh, my you... book would though. Ah, yes. There is. There is a magical effect on the the spell book that Exley carries around. Okay. No um, that. It is it seems a fairly powerful enchantment of some sort. Um and there's there's a few different schools of magic that you're getting off of it. Um among them uh abjuration and evocation. Um Right. And I can't pick up anything like behind the the disc can no. i that would indicate a trap yeah um so it's it's anything that is visible i believe um um uh, oh, yeah. so you sense the presence of magic within 30 feet of you i uh, can sense the presence and see auras yeah so um, if there's anything behind the disc i can sense it but i can't see it yeah uh is how that penetrate. wording speaks to me can penetrate most barriers, but is blocked by one foot of stone, one inch of common metal, a thin sheet of lead, or three feet of wood or dirt. Is the disc an inch thick? Because that's a thick. Uh, it does not appear to be. Okay, from, so from she would have been able to detect yesterday. anything behind yeah. it. Okay. <sighs> She's going to finish the spell kind of look over at Exley's tome and then look away as if like you know I'm not looking at that and then um scurry back over to the others and be like well um if there are any traps none of them are magical I can't find anything magical there don't from... seem to be any typical traps either that I'm familiar with anyway so probably untampered with so Does your magic not detect mundane traps as well? No, only only magical. Uh, it, it's detect magic, not detect trap. So I was mostly just hoping that if there were any traps, they'd be magical traps and I could help, but... Uh... Oh. 
Well, that was helpful. Thank you. I've already looked over it for regular traps because that's something I have some familiarity with. So um, as long as it's not something that uh, is entirely foreign, which is possible, of course, this being a different uh, place to where I am from. Um, but most likely it doesn't seem to have any springs or coils or else string or anything that might uh, indicate that. So it would be easy to uh, to take out. It's just a question of shall we take it in Scarpa now or attempt a diplomatic route? Personally, I think we should try to be diplomatic about it. The less enemies we have working against us, the better. I mean, it's, I don't want this person on my side, but I definitely don't want him an enemy. If this is what he does to volunteers, imagine what he does to people who don't want this. Yes. Mm. Actually, I suppose if we're doing um, both options, I could make a, uh, a signal in case the negotiations go poorly. Yes, um, we can... Yeah, like, uh, like this. Um, he'll use Thaumaturgy to make like a little, like, a little bird noise. Ah. Oh. Like, a, I don't know. <laughs> something hmm. specific to Serata or something, so it's not from here. <laughs> yeah, that noise. Uh, so that would indicate, um, grab it and run. <laughs> could, that could work. My messaging spell, Kenum. Oh. Fail. Oh. <laughs> it depends, it, depending on where we talk to him in relation to where we are here, it can, it can you know, distance and certain feet of, of stone, and it, it's good to have an a, a, a auditory one. Yes. Uh, yes, I guess. I'm thinking. <laughs> so, what is the plan then? I hate to agree, but the first thing we do. We'll be asked to see Ebbett if he knows anything about uh, an amulet. Yes. Okay. Sounds prudent. Yeah. And yeah. then if he lies or uh, tries to send us in the wrong direction or gets angry. Uh, we will find a way to distract him and get him out of the room so somebody can grab it. I do have a question for him. So, in the event that we do need to get him out of the room, that might work. Excellent. Fantastic. Good. Good. Yes. No. Well, that should work. Interesting bird called choice two for. Was that magic or your own mimicry? Um, it was my magic, that, uh, my innate magic that comes from being a tiefling. Ah. Uh, Devil magic, yes. Okay, interesting. Yes. Mm, pardon me, it was just an interesting noise. Now, Good, excellent. Question. If things go south, would you rather I be in here to help or out at the cart to make getting away quicker? Be it the cart. All right. That sounds prudent. Getaway, uh, arranging a getaway regardless is probably a good thing to have ready. Well, in that case, I might uh, go to the cart now and make start making preparations. And the question is raised as to where I am. You can tell the truth in that regard. It's true. All right. So I good. might join you before. Everything starts, if that is okay. I need to go and um, renew my companions. Okay. What? Ah, uh, yes, that would be a good idea. Um, good. Oh, the well, we shall wait and reconvene in a moment, when or whenever the abbot arrives. Yes. Um, go handle your friends. So, yeah, so, uh, actually, you and es uh, Esmeralda go towards the cart and get to the cart and Esmeralda starts preparing it. Um, uh, I'm going to wait until as close to eight o'clock as possible. Yeah. Just so that I have an exact time frame okay. as I normally do in the mornings. And once it gets very close and my friends start to get hungry... <laughs> 
if they do, uh, I will cast Animate Dead on them again. All right. All right. And then do you return to the... I do indeed. The main room? All right. So Exley returns to the rest of you reasonably quickly. Um... And it's not long after it's not long that you're waiting before the abbot uh descends from upstairs. I trust you slept well. Yes. Yes, absolutely. It was uh, an excellent uh, offer to let us stay here. Thank you. I'm delighted to hear. So, where do your travels take you next? Oh. Um. Oh god. <laughs> we are to go, we are travelling around. Um, I believe we are heading for some tower next door or something. Um, mm. uh, we are, uh, Esmeralda is uh, travelling around, so uh, we need to, uh, we are just uh, attempting to we have been um, advised of a potential uh, suggestion, in a way, to aid with the, against Strahd. And so uh, we are travelling with Esmeralda to uh, search for certain things, or procure things, or speak to others about this matter. Aid against Strahd? Yes. It pertains, it pertains to breaking of the curse. Yes, um, could we go and uh, talk in a more, a more private room? This is very um, secretive information. And then for like, look pointedly at like probably beaches to be like, come on, <laughs> go get in position. Because <laughs> I think we're still in the same uh, room. <laughs> yeah, we course. are. Uh, step upstairs with me into the belfry. Thank Excellent. You. We would be delighted to. Hmm. Oh, um, Beatrice, could you just stay with the bags in case Esmeralda needs help? Thank you. And then when the abbot turns around, CV is going to look at Conrad as if, like, I, I did a deception. CV, uh, can you please <laughs> he raises his eyebrows at you. roll me... Deception? I'm, I'm tossing up between deception or performance. I, I, will, I will say... I'll pro it's not an outright deception, so I will say performance. Okay. Oh, I'm glad I rolled well. That's an 18. Okay. Um. So Conrad raises his, eye raises his eyebrows at you regardless, but he's like, mm, just, then it just shrugs your shoulders a little bit. All right. Uh, so, um, yeah. So the, the Belfry is i believe so uh the wooden stairs climb 20 feet to a loft with a pitched roof and a door in the center of the south wall unlit lanterns hang from the rafters and a rope dangles from a bronze bell lodged in the belfry 30 feet overhead the room is filled with the sound of beautiful music a melody so enchanting that it adds a bit of much needed warmth to the otherwise freezing room. Black Shroud covers a humanoid shape lying on a wooden table. The music does nothing to stir it. Cot heaped with furs rests in the northeast corner, surrounded by empty wine bottles. An oil lamp burns atop a nearby table, silhouetting a squat creature that has two heads. It sits on the edge of the cot with a vial between its legs. With a crustacean claw-like appendage, it grasps the neck of the instrument while running a bow gently across its strings with its hand. Uh, Cloven, uh, please, uh, go, uh, feed the others. It's a seven. Damn. Uh, <laughs> Damn. This is the image of Cloven, for simplicity's sake. A little bit to the side, Darby. We can't see. Right. Right. No. Oh yeah. Other side. Other side. Other way. Other way. Other way. There we go. There okay. he is. Yeah. That's right. right. Different cameras. Cool. Got a What's goat a head man. and a baby head. <laughs> Very handsome. So clearly, the goat head is a seven, and the baby one is underage. So yeah. <laughs> we won't roll for that. 
<laughs> yep. Um, oh, that's weird. Yeah. And yeah, so he goes goes down and out of sight and Beatrice, you see them dart through quickly as yeah, as you are waiting downstairs. Um so what what do you wish to uh what information do you have? Well, um, we have uh, spoken with the Mointier. I do not know if you were familiar with them. I am aware of them. Yes, they um, had uh, some kind of uh, prophecy which spoke of a few things, I believe. Um, uh, Sevia wrote them down. Um, and um, it was speaking of uh, obtaining things to, um, to help in uh, lifting of the curse um, on, upon Strad and the, uh, the rest of the... Uh, uh, land, and as I'm sure you can understand, as someone else who has travelled to here and now cannot leave, we are, of course, very interested as much as yourself in lifting the curse um, in whatever way we can. I'm certain we can... Uh, you wished for us to find a wedding dress uh, to aid in your plans. We figured we might we had a discussion and thought it might be prudent to share what we have heard um with you some of it anyway so that is the true reason your friend remained downstairs what you... i do not understand uh, do not think you can fool me with uh simple pageantry I, we are and, uh, and employing honesty. Yes, but there is, uh, there is honesty and there is dancing around the truth. You know exactly where the amulet is, don't you? The amulet? What sort of amulet do you speak of? The uh, holy symbol of Ravenkind. <laughs> uh, symbol of the Morning Lord. You know of something like this? We Why thought we might you playing ask coy? you. Why are you playing coy with me? I don't play coy. I, I, I don't have time for I it. Have, I have told Not you man. that I have seen through your pageantry and yet you avoid my query. Exley takes a step forward. Ah, uh, yes, Exley, you had some questions for this, sir. Uh, y yes, yes. Uh, I did, but... I think it might be prudent to ask a separate one. Certainly. And kind of steps back a little bit more, because um, he, I imagine, probably shoved his way to the, to the front where he's like, yeah, I'll talk to this guy. And he takes a step back, but still like beside Ixley, I guess. May we borrow your amulet? And what are your intentions with the amulet? I do not know. Well, and no dancing around the truth this time. It's what we said. It's the same mission as yours to break the curse upon Barovia. Yes, we admittedly did hear of an amulet, and um, we are not certain exactly how it may be utilized, but that was as. Something it was re referred to in the uh, prophecy that the wonderful point here mentioned. If you, well, you do have the amulet in your possession, as um, then we would be interested in obtaining it or at least borrowing it. I do have some money or things of other good use, if that um, that sways you. So, Exley. As the first person to specifically make the request, roll me a persuasion check 
with advantage. Oh, man. Please. He is not charismatic. <laughs> no. But he's plain talking, so that would account for a lot. Dear. Oh, oh no. no. You do have advantage. Oh, you do have yeah. advantage. I know. I'm just trying to figure out what dice are least likely going to destroy me. That's fair. <laughs> oh. Advantage? Advantage was a nine? Oh no, oh, your no. dice. Your extra dice are cursed. Advantage was a nine. Wow. Yeah. I rolled a nine and a ten, and I have a negative one. <laughs> oh no. Excuse me if I do not uh, completely trust your intention. We're going to cut for a moment down to Beatrice downstairs. Yeah. What have you been doing in this time? Uh, well, when uh, Cloven came down, Beatrice would have sort of jumped a little at seeing it. Probably would have followed, followed it to the door, just sort of watched it walk out and wander around. She would be sort of searching the downstairs area for something that she can like grab and use to stand on to get to the disc should she i mean there's plenty there's plenty of chairs yeah there's plenty of chairs she's probably positioned one not directly under but like near enough that she can grab it and go okay. if she needs okay um, so, yeah, upstairs. We clearly have already uh, shown that we do not wish to... Uh, we, we are aligned against Strad. This is only what we have heard from the Moint here about an amulet. As I said, um, we are happy to aid you so we can mutually work towards this. Destruction of Strad is not the way to break the curse. Destruction only... It gets destruction. This curse must be broken. Oh, wait. That is Vasilka's purpose. So do you have deep knowledge of this curse? I know it stems from Strahd's earlier attempts at marriage and that Not at always. and that what he seeks is a bride he did seem quite insistent on a certain one the first time we were attacked by him i do and i have been careful to choose Vasilika's features to best represent the, the good lord's tastes. Ah. Well, I suppose men do have a type after all, so that might assist. So you believe that if he finds a wife to marry and all that that is all that will take to remove the curse i have absolute faith hmm well, surely even with absolute faith it doesn't hurt to have a plan b yes and there's no reason why we cannot uh, attempt both options. We are, after all, you did request for us to help find a wedding dress for her. Do you require a ring? Or are you hoping that he will offer one for her? I only require the dress. I have quite a nice one. If you want to, uh, we can make a trade. You have a nice dress on you. N n no. <laughs> no. Uh, no. A, a ring, if you wish to. I do it's, not uh, require a ring. Okay, well, I'm certain we can find a dress for you if we can have a borrow of the amulet for some time. If you can 
Bring me the dress. I will be um, amenable to gifting you use of the holy symbol. But I will um, not part with it before. Paul's going to kind of shoot people a look like. Yeah, I do the Conrad turns circle? around, just like looks pointedly at Fall uh, while he kind of like just stretches, like, okay, wedding dress. Hmm, okay. <laughs> Paul will like nod, do a quick glance at um, Sevia to see oh. what her expression is. Uh, Sevia's just got this really frozen, like blank face on, and quite genuinely, she has no idea what to do because uh, he has just offered us a. a seemingly good option but uh oh. she doesn't want to do it she doesn't want to do that but she also doesn't want to make this man an enemy yeah this is a tough one. Oh uh, my gosh god it's parawimple all over it <laughs> parawimple parawimple hate club um um ooh. okay uh, uh so intelligence <laughs> Where can a wedding dress be obtained? I'm sure that so it's just that difficult to find tailors if around I, in Barovia. If I was aware, I would have already sourced one. Okay, well, I suppose, obviously, no tailors in this city. Perhaps elsewhere. That seems a reasonable thought. Was See? there a colour preference? Hmm. White. It must be white. Of course. Well, yes, that is a fair for wedding fair. Excellent. Uh, oh, sorry, nervous. Oh, just uh, Sevia is. Um... Oh, this could end very poorly. Uh, going to send message to Conrad. Okay. Oh, did I just? Uh, she's thinking very carefully, and uh, she's going to think at Conrad. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how. Like, I don't know if Conrad can just like hear words or something, but she's just going to think like. If we should begin looking now, blink once. If we look later, blink twice. <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of being like, do we do the plan or do we Very do this? Very quickly, roll me a, uh, a, a stealth check just to hide the, uh, the various components of the message spell. Wait. Because there are verbal, somatic, and material components to that spell. Mm. Like, well, the, materi the material's covered by my necklace. Yes. Like, so, by my arcane focus. But there's still, there's Hide still behind the somatic... Fall, because Fall's tall. There's still the somatic <laughs> like, elements. Yeah. That okay, are... well... Oh, excellent. I'm gonna say that she hit it with, like, a sneeze, like a fake sneeze, okay. and just, like, pointed. Well, in but, that um, case, I will in that case... Roll for... Which is better. Uh, <laughs> in that case, I would like would be to do stealth. Oh, if, please. If you're doing something, please, some God. sort of subterfuge to try to hide it, it is a deception. That's another 18. Okay. Um, Look, she she worded it very carefully, mm. so you know. Uh, I was really thinking he could read minds. <laughs> Tbh, we don't know that yet. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so uh, Conrad will like start very slightly because if he's never had magic in his head before, apart from Strad making him think he's his best buddy. So he kind of just like jolts a little bit, um, but then does his best to regain that composure. 
Um, and um, he, I guess because yeah, with message you can identify who's whispering in your ear, basically. Um, so he kind of, um, kind of like his shoulders seem to like slump a little bit, and then he like um, he will try to carefully um, look at uh, Sevia and. Um, I kind of forgotten. Um, indicate that we should probably yoink this now because that's what Connor wants to do. So <laughs> okay. I don't want to, but that's um, yeah, that's what Conrad <laughs> that's was what doing. Conrad wants. Okay. Um. Then CV is going to uh. I'm assuming is Fall still kind of like looking to see what Sevia's expression is? Yeah, Fall's looking like very anxious. They're trying to like keep themselves composed, but they're looking very like <laughs> undecided and will look be looking at Sevia as well. Sevia just almost as if like she did like <laughs> oh, excuse me, and does a little nod when she says it. Nice. Alrighty, so Fall will um <laughs> take a little breath. <laughs> if, if possible, like duck a little bit behind someone, and then um, uh, Beatrice will hear a little. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, so yeah, roll me, roll me a stealth check to uh, My to hide been so the, uh, bad. the yeah the. Okay, let's see. So that is oh, okay. That's a seventeen. 17. The fact Darby isn't telling us one way or another if these work is giving me so much anxiety. So, I know. I mean, this guy's probably leveled like 20, so that's yeah. Just, you, suddenly, you suddenly hear the, the, um, the bird signal from, from upstairs. Uh. Oh dear, this is Parawinkle all over again. Beatrice is going to. Because they are so disappointed. He's dead, so who cares? Because <laughs> there is rolling Beatrice, his watery grave. Beatrice is he's channeling the, just the energy of Kazir at the moment. Disappointment. But she is going to pull the chair across, <laughs> jump on it. She is going to check the. Uh, alcove for any traps herself okay roll me a perception she doesn't trust check. Any uh, an investigation check investigation check please investigation Wait. 22 22 yeah there are no traps um and yeah so Beatrice is gonna snag Snag yeah. the amulet. Yeah, so there's the am the amulet. Shut um, it down. A into her robe somewhere. A potion, a potion of some description, and um, a vial of ink as well in the alcove. She'll grab the potion as well. Okay. Follow with the ink. Uh, okay, so. Me. I have a question. Yes. Just before we roll initiative. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, Exley has just been listening into the whole conversation. When the abbot said, referred to Strad as the good lord, can he sort of ascertain this alignment? Of this man, uh, roll me an insight check. <laughs> because that's a statement. Hmm. That is. Indeed. That is a statement that kind of goes oh, against dear. what we believed him to be. And he's like, I don't want Strad dead. Yeah, let's not kill him. I just want to get make him a wife. Yeah. 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 I just want to. This is like he's hot for Strad. Like, just I'm saying. <laughs> yes. That's insight, wasn't it? Yes. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. <gasps> so this. You, you, 
you haven't heard much of uh, extraplanar entities uh, in your brief life, but you have uh, like you've you've heard bits and pieces of angels are supposed to be good, ultimately. Um, this this celestial being seems to have been warped, like warped into at the very least neutrality if not uh if not being pulled to the depths of evil um by his time in barovia excellent well damn <laughs> cool well so what happens, Darby? You know, well, so this has been happening simultaneously. Yeah. We, yeah, we've all just been sneezing and making yeah. weird noises and nodding at each other Are and trying you to. Okay. Talk. Oh, yes. Just um, there must be some dust. Of course. Now, oh. was there anything else, or are we done here? Uh, with the, um, the wedding dress, um, uh, can we mail it to you? Is there a postal system in Barovia, or should we have to return it to you personally? Uh, it will need to be returned here. Okay. All right. Well, we will, uh, we will see how things go then. Be the, uh, wife that you are creating for, Strad. Good. Oh. Wedding dress hunt. Excellent. Okay. Um. Well, thank you very much for your l listening to our query, at least, Abbott. I hope we will be able to find your address and so we can discuss um, obtaining the amulet um, as an exchange, perhaps, at a later date. I anticipate your return. Good, good. Well, I hope we will uh, we will part on good terms then. You must um, appreciate our hesitance to be uh, straight uh, to speak plainly with you um, initially, uh, considering the circumstances. But I believe we can of trust you. Of course, uh, Beatrice. Could you please roll me a sleight of hand as you place the uh, the golden disc back into place? A sleight of hand. Yes. Just to try Ooh. to leave it exactly as you found it. That's a nineteen. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh, so. Uh. Upstairs, the abbot gestures for everyone to return downstairs and follows you down. Um, um, CV is going to grab Fall's hand as they go down the stairwell <laughs> and just just squeeze it, just being like, we're both anxious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they're like, with a wound, be like, oh god, is this some kind of si signal? But then they're like, oh, yes. <sighs> yeah. Just kind of squeeze back. <laughs> I wish you. The best of luck in your endeavours. Uh, thank you. Uh, same right back at you. Yes, I believe that uh, trying to find a good way to uh, assist with the curse is, is, is uh, very beneficial. And um, hopefully we may both be able to lift the curse uh, on this land. Of course. Before we leave... Do you mind terribly, Abbott, if I were to borrow some clothes? I'm afraid we haven't any spare. That is a shame. Oh well. And he continues walking. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Cool. And is, is we we uh, is like Beatrice is just chill waiting there, or has she yeah. gone off to the car uh, already? No, Beatrice is still in the room chilling. Yeah. Like, if what? she, left, if oh, she yeah. left, it would be more suspicious. That's yeah. true. That's yeah. true. So Who... she's gonna hang around. She'll be sitting with the bats. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> All right. When you guys come down. So, let me bring up. So, 
So, uh, Exley, Paul, and Beatrice, you notice, uh, the abbot's eyes dart towards, uh, the golden disc. Mm. And you see, Ex Exley, you, your passive perception is such that you can, you can pick up that he seems to be, uh, scrutinizing it to some extent. Okay. Beatrice, Beatrice is going to sort of stand up and sort of grab some bags and be like, all right, who's taking what? Just oh, to try yes. and... Yes, we uh, we finished our discussion. We had better um, take these to Esmeralda. Yes, I will take my things. Yes. Conrad will pick up the little bag that he had, but he was lugging around his suitcase the whole time we were doing this thing. He doesn't trust the thing around Beatrice. <laughs> um, so he'll grab a little bag from Beatrice and then um, walk back towards the doorway. Um, Sylvia will grab the bag she shares with Fall, give it to Fall, and then pick up Kazir's bag. Kazir does not have a bag. I thought he did. I think he just has like a couple of pouches. Because he, he had the because he had the bag with all his religious stuff in it. Oh, not Kazir. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> I'm getting confused between characters. <laughs> yeah, rip, rip to Kazir. Rip Kazir. <laughs> just carrying around his shit. <laughs> mm. Sorry. Sorry for the confusion. Cool. Yeah, Great. Uh, Abbott, yes, um, thank you again so much for your hospitality. Uh, we'll be sure to help you with your quest. Um, yeah, we'll help in any way I can. If, if she wants to learn uh, juggling or anything to oppress Strahd, I'd be happy to help. And Ford's just kind of like nattering on, trying to like distract the Abbott <laughs> from his, their suspicion. That's fair. Uh, yes, we must be off now, so, um, farewell. Yes, look like Esmeralda just about has the cart ready. We'd better get going, now yeah. that we've had our discussion. Beatrice, uh... Was that, uh, was this disc... ...like this before? I suppose it was. Did Clerven touch it at all? Uh, he walked up to the hearth. I don't know what he did over there. Uh, roll me a deception check. Please be good. Clerven is sus. <laughs> <laughs> Clerven's the imposter. <laughs> that is a... 18. I hate that little <laughs> smile on your face. Doesn't seem like Clerven. Uh, it is an interesting piece, is it not? It's shiny. Of course. One must wonder what secrets it contains, must one not? I thought it was just a decorative thing. But, uh... You might be pleasantly surprised. Shall I show you? Nah. You really don't have much time to tarry. We've already stayed here for much too long. Yes, of we've been course. attacked before, so we should have probably shouldn't stay in the one place for too long, you know. It is certain we would not want Strahd to come here. I suppose this is a safe haven, but uh, regardless, we have had bad luck in the past. Of course. Make your way. Yes. yes. And hopefully we shall visit again soon with good news. And a wedding dress. Hopefully. Yes, Sevia, uh, Fall, Beatrice, 42, let us, let us go. 
Uh, I did, she, Esmeralda does look rather impatient. Well, not runs, Don't run. but like just moves. Move. Just, just tries to match. I, ima content. I imagine it's probably one of those things that like you just hastily but not overly hurriedly walk yeah. out the door CV and then is... as soon as the last of you is out the door and the door is closed you just bolt for the cart yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just the same time. and Paul's just like that was so stressful <laughs> um, oh we need the horses we need to get out of here we need the horses we need to get out of here oh, yes i'm not going in the cart I'm... Yeah, um, Connor's doing a fast walk to his horse. For reference, who was the last to leave? It would Exley was not altering his pace at all, so he would okay. probably be the last one. Okay, so Exley, as you um, as as you were basically l stepping over the threshold, you did see uh, out of the corner of your eye the abbot reaching up as if he was going to remove the disc from the wall. <laughs> Run, 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 <laughs> run so fast. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, I'm a fast walker to my horse, and I will, Conrad will unhitch her and kind of get um, her, like, he'll... Kind of oh, yeah, because we're down... Oh. Oh, oh, sorry, we're down by the gate now, because that's where we hitched yes. all the horses in the cart, so... We're, we have some distance have between some us distance. and the front door. Mm. I guess... Um, oh, uh, well, actually, um, can you... Uh, do, would you mind becoming a horse? Make it out to the gate first. I may need to cast some spells. Okay. 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 Excellent. Okay. Okay. Connor will vault onto his horse and be like, okay, time to go. Beatrice will get back into the cart underneath them through the secret hatch. With, you, with your friends. With my friends. <laughs> Christian <laughs> still in there. And dangling clack. Who are still wearing exactly the same clothing as oh. before <laughs> and are in the same positions as when you left. Okay. So the skeletons are still in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, three, five, six, and eight, you mean? <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. So. You start to um, make your way, uh, yeah, you get into position and uh, as uh, Exley, Paul and Beatrice, you all hear the slamming sound of a door being forcibly pushed open. Oh God. Beatrice will just yell, uh, Paul, it's Stevia. There's no time. Get in cart. Oh, God. <laughs> and you turn, you all turn your heads to, towards the main, uh, building of the Abbey. And you see, uh, with this kind of blue black aura, the abbot, uh, mace in hand, uh, necrotic rotting wings jutting out of his back rushing towards you uh, okay uh can i'm getting get, in the cart can i get everyone to roll for initiative please <gasps> oh god oh god no. <laughs> that's a Ooh. four oh. 17 19. Wait, so I don't I want to hide. reset this. 15. Um, I was going to cast Fireball and get in the cart, but I guess I can't do that, though. So, uh, so what was Conrad? 15. 15. Exley? 18. 18. Uh, 4? 19. Beatrice. 17. And Sevia was? Four. Four. <laughs> uh, uh, Esmeralda will be... Uh, so, well... 
have the horses will be collectively uh, nine. And then the abbot. Uh, abbot, there is the abbot. Abbot. There we go. So the abbot uh, wins initiative. Um, Big force. Jesus. And, <laughs> yeah, so uh, he's gonna rush towards you uh, with his fly speed and. Um, uh, wrong with this, bro. Uh, I, I will sort that out. Okay, uh, so. Abbott is going to uh, rush towards the cart with flying speed, and so where is everyone relative to the cart? I am behind the cart. I'm probably the last person at the moment. Probably next to the cart. Okay. Um, yeah. next to four. And Connor's will lance around because he's he's already on the he's already on his horse. So um, okay. Beatrice is under the cart. <laughs> All right, so uh, I think he's going to make probably an attack. Start with an attack against Exley. Uh, that is a sixteen. Does that hit? It does not. Does not. Okay, and his second attack uh, is a nineteen. Does that hit? Uh, that does hit. Yes. All right. So that is... Do you have any damage resistances? Uh, no. Alright, so... Oh, uh, poison and disease. Okay, so those... Not, not anything that's applicable you. here. About to happen to you. So you take... <laughs> eight points of bludgeoning damage. Mm -hmm. And... 17 points of radiant damage as this mace crashes into you. Excellent. All right. Um, and that is the abbot's turn. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, next is Paul. Oh, gosh. Um, okay, would it be possible... Okay, so he's attacking. He's like right on Exley. Would it be possible to go under the cart and then can I fire from there? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I will you swing. Would, you would technically be at disadvantage, I believe. Oh yeah, I was thinking something like that would happen. Yeah, yeah. no, that's fair. Um, what for do? I guess Thor will do this because they're still thinking, they're still um, weighing up whether they should get in the cart if that's the safest place to go. So for now, they're going to be, um, swing under the cart and then pull out their dart and uh, try to fire two attacks. Okay. Uh, yeah, roll to hit. Okay, so that's, uh, oh, that's a dirty 20. Dirty 20 will hit. Alrighty, and that is seven damage. Seven damage. Okay, uh, what kind of damage is it? It would be non-magical piercing, I guess. Yeah, it's it. just piercing damage, yeah. Okay. It doesn't do nothing. Uh, it, it still does damage, but... Uh, uh. Yeah, it's... The abbot seems relatively unfazed by it. Cool. Um... Well, that's all I can really do from here. I'll do another dart. Yeah. Uh, that's a 22 to hit. 22 suddenly hits. And that's five damage. All right, so halved two. Okay. Yay. <laughs> and anything with your bonus action? Um, nope. Okay. Uh, excellent. Mm-hmm. That's me. What would you <laughs> like to do? Uh, panic, but in a robot voice, please. <laughs> uh, Definitely possible. Excellent. Once I've finished doing that, um... I'm going to uh, 
yell at my colleagues, uh, the ones that, you know, are loyal to me at least, to, uh, <clears throat> well, out of the cart and attack now. And is that an action or a bonus action? I can't remember. Uh, I think it was what a What does it say in the spell as far as I can't remember at all. Uh, Beatrice is on deck for reference. Uh, bonus action to command. Bonus yeah. action to command. Within 60 feet of me, okay. and I'm near the cut. Yeah. Uh, and the command is just attack things that are attacking us. All right. Basically. Um, and as an action, he's going to... Uh, yeah, pull the, the tug it like a little tendon in a way that's part of his underneath his cloak and yeah. pull out a bit of wood which is essentially his quarter staff which is sort of fused into his body. He's going to use that as a focus mm. as he raises the quarter staff up to the sky. Uh, clouds start to form above him and he casts uh, Call Lightning. All right, so is that a dex save? It is a dexterity 13, so not great, but I can keep it for up to 10 minutes. Uh, that is a 15. So That's that still fine. does half, I believe. Does indeed. So that is So fun. you see the abbot like hovering above the ground uh, dodge out of the way as the lightning crashes down and you still manage to kind of clip his wing with it. Um, uh, that is uh, 15 normally. 15 normally. Okay. So that's... So that's before halving for... Before halving, yeah. I don't know whether you want to round that for up. save. Yep. Uh, okay. So, uh... So that is... Uh, so... It's not currently stormy outside, is it? Except for the little localized one, is it? I, no. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, it's it's cloudy because it's always cloudy in Barovia, but That's yeah, it. it's 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 not uh, thematically stormy conditions, no. is it? Okay, cool. <laughs> That's a shame. Uh, Beatrice and Conrad is on deck. I will say there is there is a window on the cart. There is. Yes. It's inside the cart. Um, Beatrice is, get, is going to um, shoot him with her arrow. All right. Roll to hit. That's a dirty 20. Dirty 20. Nice. So roll for damage, and I believe the arrow is non-magical. Like the bow and arrow are non-magical. Yeah, it's, it's non-magical. Yeah. On the arrow. Uh, I can't find my dice. That one. Uh, a seven. Seven. Okay. Uh, Conrad. Uh, unless there's any bonus action you want to do, Beatrice. Um. Can I... Uh, no. No. Okay. That's all. Conrad. Um, okay, so Conrad is going to... Uh, he's on the horse, um, and he's going to call out, come on, we need to get out of here now. Um, and he's going to... Um, I guess he's just gonna um, grab a dagger from his hip and like throw it at the abbot, I suppose. Um, again, maybe at one of the wings yeah. or like so the this... joint of the wing. Yeah. So, yeah. So this is a non-magical dagger then. No, or... I don't. I believe I did get like a magic. Like I got something for my you rapier, got... but it's never been added to D and D build. Yeah. But it's, it's it's a regular dagger, yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's a non a dirty twenty to hit. Dirty twenty um, to hit. Yep. So if that does hit, that's that a hit. 
you know, like a five. So three damage. Um, and um, he's going to call out to Exley, I guess, and be like, now watch for your right. He seems to sweep low. And that will be um, a, the help action to Exley right. to give him advantage. Um, and then again, he's going to go, but we need to get out of here now. And um, he's just kind of like the horse will just like, He'll, he'll swoop around a little circle where he does that, but that's all yeah. he's doing. He's just waiting. Um, yeah, uh, Esmeralda is going to uh, say, I think you have a good I, I think you have a good idea with that uh, lightning there. It seemed to work pretty well. Uh, as she casts a lightning bolt at, uh, at the abbot. Um, so he... What is her... Is her say um, is where is his spell cast? Okay, uh, intelligence. This is this is annoyingly set out. Um, so, uh, uh, so it was 8d6 for one thing. Um, so, uh, DC 14, so he did save. Um, 5, 10, 40, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, so half. To eleven or ten, sorry. All right. So again, the abbot kind of ducks, uh, rolls midair out of the way of the 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 lightning, but gets clipped in the wing by it. Um. All right, and then uh, uh, Sevia. Okay, first I have a question that I'm struggling to find in my notes. But um, when Sevia tried to cast Hold Person on a on a vampire, it didn't work. Yes. Right? It, it only doesn't... works on humanoids. Right. And this does not count as a humanoid? No, it does not. Okay, cool. Thank you. You, um, you know this is a celestial. Yeah, okay. I assume... You, humanoid means shape not race but okay so spell sculpt only works for like one plus a spells level and that means if i cast fireball i'd murder esmeralda so or the horses so um esmeralda would be out of range though depends the range on fireball is like 20 feet can cast it as like ten feet yeah. behind him potentially. Um, the series checking his information. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's yeah Three. one plus the spell's level, so it would be four targets for fireball. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> and oh. yeah, es Esmeralda is at the front of the cart. Um, so she would be out of range. She would be. Um, you could you could pretty easily um, aim it in a way that only Exley would be within the range, range where I need to use spell sculpt. Okay, yeah. I was going to use a different spell, but why not? I mean, Exley is still going to take damage because it's not zero. No, and he no, spell sculpt means people automatically save. Yeah, and it's saved for half. No, 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 no. I read the thing in Spell Sculpt. Oh, does Spell Sculpt uh, actually go if... if? Uh, they take no damage if they would normally take half on a successful save. Oh, okay. Yeah. I double-checked that because I don't want to hurt my new friend. Did not with realize that. X. Okay, yeah, so... All right, so do I roll to hit? Away. Or do you save? Uh, it is a save. Okay. So what is the DC? Uh, 
it is if I get back to it. A D C Dex 16. Yeah, he fails it. Yes! Full damage! Fuck, so that's so that's oh god. Six. A D6. All my fireball dice. Six, five, six. Okay. Wait, no, seven, eight. I just I have so many dice. Okay, that's Ooh, there's a lot of sixes. Three, six, six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-two. 24, 28, 32 points of damage. Nice. Okay. <laughs> uh, he's not quite looking shaky, but the, 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 you see as like this fireball consumes him. And actually, you, you see this fireball surrounding you, but feel completely untouched by it. Um,. <laughs> But as as the fireball subsides, um, you see that the the already rocking black feathers of uh, the abbot's wings have burnt away, leaving only uh, the stems of the wings to Ooh. to keep him afloat. Um, and yeah. Okay. Do you have anything with your bonus action? Question. Yes. With Dragon's Breath, it says the casting time is one bonus. Does that include using it? Uh, no, it doesn't include using it. Because the, the wording uh, makes it seem like it does. You, you couldn't you couldn't cast that anyway. You can't cast two leveled spells um, oh. in your turn. Yeah. Um, so, uh, at the end of your turn, uh, yeah, we're going to call that the end of the episode. Um, oh boy! And we will pick uh, this up there uh, we go. with a very angry, crispy <laughs> Abbott next time. Yay. See you next week, guys. See you next Have a great week. week, guys. Goodbye. Goodbye.